Part 3 of repairing and rebuilding a very large horizontal model steam engine shows me chipping away at the filler around the screws that hold the crankshaft supports in place. As I mentioned in the last video, this is not really a smart idea for holding the main bearings, but I have to live with it because it's the way the engine's been made. I'm going to replace these slotted bolts though with proper Allen head high tensile bolts, and when the aluminium parts are held to the cast iron bed plate using some Loctite 603, I don't think they're going anywhere. I think that the design of this engine evolved to allow the builder to machine the parts on a small machine tool. Although the 13.5 inch flywheel is a bit of a problem, my bigger lathe only has a 6 inch centre height so I can't get it in that to clean up the outer surface. After an initial degreasing with white spirit, it's outside onto my improvised workbench. Using an orbital sander and flatting off the existing paintwork, I could I suppose take this and have it shot blasted, but you don't know what you're going to find, some cast iron castings are a real mess. And this paint's quite stable, well most of it is. Some of it's flaky and chips off, but I'll be chipping that off anyway. There are certain areas I can't really get with the orbital sander, so it's down to a bit of elbow grease with some coarse sandpaper. This is quite a tedious job, but it's good to do it outside. If you do it indoors, you must wear some kind of breathing mask. I just make sure that I'm upwind of where the dust's going. The next thing to do is to fill all the indentations in the casting, starting off with an application of commercial car body filler. The car body filler will fill most of the undulations and the larger of the craters in the casting, but later on I will be using cellulose putty, which is much finer. It's normal practice with castings to fill them, very few castings are so perfect that you can just paint them. Have a look at your lathe and you'll see that that casting's been filled, that's why it looks so smooth. Once you've filled all the initial indentations, let the filler set, then sand it smooth with the orbital sander, or some hand sandpaper, whichever you wish. And now you need to blow over the casting with some primer. The reason for this is that it makes undulations very easy to see. There's a long way to go yet, this is just a primary coat, just to show you where you need to fill a bit more. And believe me, there's a lot of filling and this is a big engine bed plate. While the primer was drying in the sun, I went back into the workshop and repaired the crankshaft. Initially I thought, shall I make a new crankshaft? Then I thought, well no, most of it's okay. So what I did was, I made one half of it. This is the offending bent part, and as you can see, it's turned down to fit the bearing. The diameter of the main shaft is three quarters of an inch, but it's turned down to five eighths, at a critical point. The main flywheel is very heavy indeed, 13 and a half inches in diameter and very solid thick cast iron. So what I thought it would do is keep the shaft a full three quarters of an inch diameter at the flywheel end. This makes for a much stronger crankshaft. This is a built up crankshaft assembled from different components. So all I had to do was drill out the cross pin and then heat up the crankshaft slightly with the blow lamp. This allowed me to withdraw the bent part of the shaft as the heat destroys the Loctite's bond. Then I machined a new shaft using my collet chuck which is very accurate. Then to keep everything in alignment, the whole thing was re-Loctited together in the lathe. Quite simple really. After the Loctite 603 had set, I then re-drilled the crank web and fitted a quarter inch pin. And after this I machined the keyway in the shaft using my milling machine. At a future date I may do a video about making crankshafts. This only really works with a large crankshaft, a smaller crankshaft needs to be built in a different way. For now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.